Join me right now back on the show is one of the guys that is basically holding together the UFC flyweight division, Kai Carl France. What's going on, Kai? What's up, bro? How you been, man? Been a while. Good. Good, good, man. Um, you're 2-0 in the UFC, man. Um, do you feel like you have established yourself in the organization now? Yeah. Um, like, I, I feel comfortable in the UFC um, for so long, you know. I I put it on such a pedestal, and I didn't think it would ever happen. Now, you know, a year and a half later, uh, um, you know, a contender now, you know, if one or two more fights, and um, I'm right in the mix again with um, with title contention. So, yeah, I'm in a good place, and um, yeah, I'm excited to get back in there. It's been a while since I fought, six months now. So, um, yeah, I'm just excited to show my new skill sets, um, what I've been working on, uh, and yeah, just just kind of have fun with it. Realistically, you know, you you just mentioned you're like one or two fights away from fighting a contender. But do you feel ready right now? Like, even if if your next fight, you know, if they if if De La Rosa pulls out and they pull in like Benavidez, are you ready to fight one of those guys? Yeah, like it, it, that's a that's a good thing about this flyweight division. You know, everyone in the top fifteen could fight each other, and it would be a close competition. And that's just from um, the flyweights always having to compete against the best. You know, there, there's never really been a feeling out process where you you know build yourself up. And then, you know, um, get to that next level. You just kind of have to jump straight in the deep end. And then two, three, fight, win streak, you, you're in title contention. So it's something I've always had to deal with. I don't mind fighting with a bit of pressure on myself. And, um, yeah, I'd love to fight, you know, those big names in the UFC. Um, I know Tim Elliott was calling me out for a while. He, he I think he uh, retweeted and um, Instagrammed me maybe like five times. So, like, I know he, he wants to get there. He doesn't like me from the Ultimate Fighter, but you know what? I don't like him either. No, I, just because I don't respond doesn't mean, um, you know, I don't want to fight him. It just means that, you know, at the at the time I was injured. So, there's no point in me, uh, me opening up my mouth and um, trying to pick a fight when I, when I can't even fight um, at that time. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to take that fight one day. Um, obviously, he's a guy that's always been on my radar. Um, and, and so is Mark De La Rosa. Um, I remember meeting him in um, Melbourne earlier this year when his wife fought on the same card as me. So I got to suss him out, same size as me, same height. Um, and I knew, you know, if this flyweight division was going to stick around, he would come back down because he'd been fighting at bantamweight. Um, he'd come back down and, um, yeah, we would be um, where we are now, where we've got to fight three weeks out. Um, so, yeah, if, if I do get, you know, if anything does happen, where it happened in the past, last, last time I spoke to you, I was supposed to fight um, Ashkan. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the week of the fight, he pulled out, and then they replaced it with um, Eliza Garcia. So, you know, it's it, it's not it's not said and done until the guy's standing across from you from the octagon, and um, you just got to de- deal with the cards that you're given and and, and roll, roll with the punches. Yeah, a lot of guys, man, they they call you out. You know, you're 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 a guy that just stays <laughs> and does your work. You go out there, yeah. you perform. You're not out there like calling other dudes out really you know you're just chilling yeah. but it's safe to say you hear everybody when they call you out even guys outside the ufc you know i've seen you know because i interview guys in australia and new yeah. zealand and they're always looking to fight you even though they're not even in the ufc why is it why do they not like you man i don't know i must i i, I guess i might um, i'll take it as a compliment they mm. admire my work and they see that you know i'm working hard and i'm getting the results and um, they want to be in my position. So it's something that keeps me striving to be better. It's something that I know like a lot of guys want to be in my position. So that makes me work a lot harder. And um, that, that's why I have the work effort that I do because, you know, this isn't for everyone. And um, the guys that take this lifestyle and, and pursue the mixed martial arts career, um, you got to strive to be the best. Otherwise, you know, you, you won't make it. So, um, yeah, I take it as a compliment when guys want to call me out, especially, you know, my fellow countrymen in New Zealand. Not really New Zealand, but mostly in Australia. Uh, I know a lot of guys at Fat Fly and Bantam that do want to fight me, but, you know, they've got to get in the UFC first. I'm not going to sign a fight when they're not signed yet. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, these guys that have been, um, you know, calling me out and, um, you know, they, they say they're making moves. Hopefully they do get recognized and get signed because, you know, I'd love to see more New Zealanders and Australia in, in um, the UFC. And um, then we can compete. We can sign the contract. I, you know, I don't, I'll fight anyone. But um, when you're in the UFC, you know, you don't you don't get to pick your fights. You just gotta uh, get what you're given. And uh, whoever the UFC says you're gonna fight, that's who you who the next guy is. So um, yeah, I know the guys that have been calling out. You know, um, 
Shannon Ross, Alan Fulpot, you know, all these guys, I see them, you know, I, I'm not just, um, just because I stay quiet and stay in my own lane doesn't mean I don't recognize it. And, um, you know, if I see them and when I'm over at the UFC events, I, I know who they are and I know they've got their eye on me and they're watching, but they can keep watching because I'm going to keep, keep, keep planning that later in the UFC. And, um, you know, I want to fight for the title eventually. And, um, That'd be a dream to fight my old coach Henry Cejudo. You know, doing so well for the division, winning the bantamweight title as well. And um, it's an exciting time right now because I feel like all the flyweights that are in the UFC are putting on exciting fights. Like, if you look back at all the fight bonuses in the last UFC, it's always been at least one flyweight getting a getting a bonus. So that, you know, that's reassurance knowing that um, the UFC are recognizing that that you know the boys are putting on putting out work and um, and the fans are liking it and uh, they're getting rewarded for it. So yeah, it's awesome to do. Uh, awesome to see. Yeah, it seems like, uh, in my eyes, man, like a lot of guys, they don't look at your track record. You know, they don't look at mm -hmm. what you've been through in your career. Because you, yeah. you, they just look at your age and where you're at right now, right? But they don't know that you've been in China many times. You've been in Hong Kong. You yeah. fought for Legend FC. You know, you yeah. trained out in Thailand for four years fighting in Asia and building your record. You know, you were on the Ultimate Fighter. But... You know, they just see you as like somebody that is a product of your gym. And and that's true. But you also mm -hmm. went through the, the hard times, man. You went through, you know, the difficulties to get to mm -hmm. the point you're at right now. And, and these guys, they just want that, I guess. They just want that UFC title that you have. Yeah, exactly. Like you're in this Asian market. So you see the guys that are coming up the ranks and I've been on uh, been on the, on the circuit for a while now. It's not happened overnight. You know, I, I remember making the first call when I told my parents that I was moving over to Thailand. I was uh, one year into university, and when I was about nineteen, you know, they were, they thought I thought I was crazy. You know, I was going to be like, you know, I'm, I'm moving over to Thailand. I want to pursue my mixed martial arts career. I wasn't winning all my fights, so it's not not something that like um, I was destined to be in the UFC. It was just uh, I want to take a gamble and I wanted to take a risk. So, you know, I'm I'm glad I went over there, got that um, fight experience and that and lived that lifestyle, um, being over there for four years, fighting in the Asia circuit. And it gives you that chance to develop as a fighter. I feel like, you know, different training bodies, different training partners, um, and just adapting in fights. Like sometimes I didn't know who I was fighting. I'd just turn up, fly out to another country, use it for my visa run, and then I would, um, you know, jump in the ring and, and get paid for it and then come back to Thailand and keep training. So guys that have been doing this for not too long, you know, a few years, and they're starting to make, have some momentum, and then they want to call me out, you know, uh, I've been I've been doing this for a while now. It's nearly ten years I've been been training in uh, mixed martial arts and fighting. You know, Legend FC. If, if you uh, if you're back in the day and you knew that promotion, uh, that was a pretty big promotion back then. I, I remember it was Legend FC and, and One FC at one point. Um, and you know, a lot of their champs were um, Legend FC champs. So the, Rob the Whitaker, color, uh, he was there. Yeah, exactly. And he lost the fight in uh, yeah. Legend FC. I remember that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy to see how well guys have done after legends and um it was, it was an awesome promotion you know? that was based in hong kong um at macau sorry and uh i fought in hong kong twice on, on legend fc so you know shenzhen's only a half an hour away so people if they've been fight fans for a while they'll still remember me being from there and and they'll see how how much i've developed as a fighter and, and as a person and um yeah I'm, I'm excited to go back to china it's been a while since i've been there um i was for, mostly fighting mainland china uh, i think the city was Jing. Jingzhou, sorry, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, so I fought there, um, you know, a while on uh, a lot of time. Sorry, on um, WLF Wars, and then on um, Kunlun Fight Night as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've I've been fighting there, and I know the style that the Chinese fans like. It's it's that uh, high paced action packed, um, stand up fighting, and you know that's what I'm I'm, I'm looking to do for this fight. I, I want to be exciting, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I've been working hard. Um, Eugene and I have been coming up for a good game plan for uh, Mark De La Rosa. And, um, yeah, I expect to uh, execute it um, come fight night. Yeah, let's talk about Mark De La Rosa. You mentioned that you saw him. You kind of sized him up when you saw him last. You know, same size. Um, he is a bantamweight that is dropping down to flyweight for the first time. Yeah. Was he someone that was on your radar? Or, you know, were you, you know, thinking about taking another opponent before he his name came up? Um, yeah, I, like... I know all the bantamweights are on my radar as well because I know a lot of them can drop down to fly. So at one point, a lot of flies, you know, including myself, were starting to get ready just to stay at bantam. And um, that's why I was lifting heavy, you know, eating. So when I got the call to um, that the, my fight's going to be back at flyweight, you know, I had to start cutting weight straight away. 
um, and just making that the adjustments that you need to to make that weight class. But yeah, Mark's always kind of been on my radar. I, I know he's two and two in the UFC. He's coming off a loss against Alec Perez. Um, he's a tough, tough dude. He's um, got a good submission game. He's got a lot of rear naked chokes. So I've done my homework. I know what he's going to try to do. Um, but you know, this is mixed martial arts, so. A lot of guys come in with a better ground game than me, but they can't get me there, you know. Or if they can get me there, I, you know, I'm well drilled and I'm well um, rehearsed, so I know I know what it's going to come next. So, yeah, well, well, let's see what happens on fight night. You know, like a lot of game plans go out the window once you know we start trading, and um, it might even just turn into a boxing match. And um, he does have some pretty slick hands, um, but I feel like my experience is, is what's going to get me through this fight as well. I'm not coming in injured, which is it's, it's a nice thing when you can throw both hands. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from my last opponent, Piver. Uh, but I did hurt my hand in that fight. Pretty much the first or second uh, the second punch I landed, um, my hand buckled and I, I couldn't really throw it as hard as I, I'd like to. And it didn't have that pop and that sting that it usually does. Um, and that's why I feel like I couldn't keep the pressure on and, and put him away. So... I'm excited for this fight because I know I don't have those little injuries that um that I picked up in my last fight and um yeah just ready to showcase some new skills and um yeah to take take my uh, hopefully climb climb the rankings and um if if everything goes to plan I want to fight on that Melbourne card as well that's only five weeks after China I'm not looking past Mike De La Rosa at all but I am ambitious and I and I love to um set goals for myself so I, I'd love to do both if I can. You know, you seem like a very cerebral fighter. You said you've done your homework on De La Rosa. Um, now, with your approach to this fight, right? Like, when you think about game planning, are you doing that with your coaches or is that just something that your coaches do on their own? Yeah, it's something that my coaches do on their own. So I I just listen to exactly what they say. Um, I'm just a, bot, a, a product of, of what they're, they're telling me. Um, they've, they've obviously done their homework and... They've got the little drills and they've seen tendencies that he does and habits that he does that we want to try to exploit. So I'm not too too big on game planning my, myself, um, looking at my opponents' fights and stuff like that. I do watch a few, but I don't like to get caught up in that, you know, especially in this fight game where anything can happen. Your opponent can get pulled out and then you've got a new one. Happened, you know, on my debut um, on a week's notice. So I didn't want to get too caught up in seeing what they're doing. I, I'm, they should be more worried about um, what I'm going to do. So... That's that's kind of my approach to the fight game. Just let it all happen, you know. React as it comes, and um, you know, if you're well drilled and um, you've been you've been training, um, that will show in the fight. There's a lot of movement going on in the flyweight division. You know, in your first two outings, in your first two fights, there was a lot of stuff going on. You know, is the flyweight division surviving? Mm -hmm. You know, you got guys pulling out. You know, you got short notice fights going on. But this time, is there a sense of security for you? Because De La Rosa doesn't seem like a guy that's going to pull out from the fight. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I know he's going to come. Uh, he's going to come in and and ready to, you know, take take everything I have. Um, but you know, I've been I've been training for this for a while now. This is my seventh week in fight camp. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm more than ready, and I, I haven't taken this fight lightly at all. I think he's ranked number fifteen just because he's been fighting at bantamweight. I'm currently ranked number nine. Just it's because because a lot of people have been dropping back down. Um, with, I think I saw Sergio Pettis is back in the rankings. Um, Brandon Moreno got re-signed, so it's it's reassuring that they're re-signing guys that um that they cut, you know, because at one point, you know, there was only about twelve of us in the division, and um, we didn't really know who was going to fight who. Um, so it's it's nice to know that they are going to keep us around and um. Yeah, I'm just glad uh, you know, I've got I got more fights coming my way and uh, eventually I want the UFC to come back to Auckland. It, it feels like it's the right time now. Oh, especially this year with um the magnitude of how big the Whitaker, uh, Whitaker Israel fight will be with uh, you know, 60,000 people arena. Um it's about time they come back to Auckland because a lot of that card is going to be full of Kiwis and um uh, you know, we would love to fight back in our hometown and um that's always been my dream to fight back at home in Auckland. Is there a arena that could fit like fifty, sixty thousand in Auckland? Uh there is. There is um like rugby stadiums, but mm -hmm. the thing is they're all outdoor and the weather's too unreliable here to kind of um <laughs> follow through with all of that. But the Spark Arena, which is in the city, that sits about twenty thousand. So, you know, for a fight night that that's perfect. Um so yeah, it, it depends on what they want to do and obviously who's available. Um but, you know, there's four UFC fighters out of city kickboxing. 
um, in the UFC. And um, there's going to be more. So be on the lookout for a few more names popping up because um, we've got a few guys that, um, you know, on the cusp of getting signed. Um, and hopefully, you know, they them coming back to this area um, gives them that nudge that they need. You mentioned that you were bulking up, getting stronger, getting bigger. Um, is that bantamweight division something, you know, that you would want to go up to in the future? You want to fight some of those guys? Because it seems like the bigger known names are in the Bantamweight division. Yeah, exactly. I, like, I'm not going to be fighting at flyweight my whole career. I know I want to go up eventually. Um, I've fought half of my career at Bantamweight. Yeah. Coming in the UFC, I was on a five-fight win streak at Bantamweight. So I feel like it is natural for me to go up a weight class. Um, the older I get, the more, um, you know, you're not going to keep bouncing back every time you cut all this weight. But I've been a lot, a lot better of um, managing all my weights and, um, and and not blowing up too much after my fights. Um, that's a lot to do with my nutritionist, um, Jordy, nicknamed the Fight Dietitian, um, based out of Brisbane, and uh, he'll be there in China as well, helping me out. So, well, he's an awesome adri- uh, addition to my, um, you know, to my career because it t- just takes all that stress away. You know, you're not worrying about what to eat on fight week, um, how much weight to cut. Um, he's still taking care of it, and um, yeah, he's he's a, he's a good guy and he's a good mate of mine. So um, that that's been a big out, big help for, um, especially in the long run. Um, you want to have longevity in this career, you know. You don't want to be cutting all this weight and then get sick of it and lose that hunger. And you know, weight cutting is half the battle. Then you got to realize you got to fight the next day. So um, yeah, it's just been making it a lot less stress. Uh, a lot less stressful um, going into fight week when you know you have a guy around you like that that can um, get you on that weight and um, get you to perform at your best the next day. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Jordy Sullivan, the fight yeah, dietitian. Bro. He's a good dude. <laughs> I, you know, I've talked to him a few times. Um, let's talk about the division now. You know, the Henry Cejudo, he yep. is on top of the division. Do you think he should relinquish the title? You know, since he does hold two belts and he's not defending it, it doesn't seem like he's going to defend it anytime soon. Yeah, um, I feel like he will stand down just because he's injured. Um, and he d- he did say he wants to fight Benavides for the um, for the title again. But right now, I feel like to keep our division kind of um, the momentum going, I think he just he needs to stand down, just have one belt, um, and open up that flyweight that flyweight belt because then you know you know you got a lot of contenders right there. Um, Figueroa just bit. Alexander Pantoja, he's looking like a beast right now. Then they get, both got five tonight. Um, obviously, Benavides would be the number one contender. Uh, you, you've got um, what else? Oh, Matt, Matt Schnell just picked up a good win in the weekend. I think he's on a four-fight win streak. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys there. Sergio Pettis, Tim Elliott. Um, a lot of good matchups to make, especially in that top ten. Anyone could beat anyone. So, um, and it's, it's an exciting time. Um, especially for me being a part of it, um, you know, one or two more fights, um, you know, it could, it could all be happening and I could be fighting for a title. So you never know what, what the UFC want, want to do, but um, that's why I just take it as it comes. I'm, I'm not, I don't take this, uh, this job lightly. I, I just got to keep my head down and keep training and, uh, you know, do what I've been doing and just let my work do the talking. If you were the matchmaker, who would be fighting for the, for the interim title? Of course, Benavidez, but who do you think is, uh, you know, up there next to him? Oh, so yeah, that's a hard question. Um, well, considering Figueroa, uh, has Benavides and Figueroa fought? No. I don't think so. That that would be a good fight. That would be a tough fight um, just because he's so explosive and he, he swings, you know. He hit Pantoja so many times and then he just didn't go down. So um, I feel like that would be the fight to make just because of, um, he just took out the number four. Um, I saw Formiga still in. He's still signed, but you know he's just coming off a loss against Benavides, so that kind of takes him out of the mix. Um, yeah, there's just a few exciting matchups. If, if Figueroa doesn't get the title shot, if he fights, you know, let's say Sergio Pettis or Tim Elliott next, he's definitely one of the um, contenders for the belt. Um, and you know, I'd love that fight as well um, against any of those guys, but. Um, I guess I got to wait my turn to get past Mark first and um, see who's available and maybe get one of them on uh, Melbourne. Yeah, I'm figuring that they're gonna put Benavides against somebody for that interim title later this year because they need to bulk up some of those pay-per-views. And then yeah. you know you get your win in China, maybe get another fight in in Melbourne, and it kind of sets it up for you to, who knows, headline yeah. 
but, next early next year a show in Auckland, man. That would be a perfect, you know, scenario for you. I uh, think it's all there for you to take, man. No, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Um, yeah, like like I said, like I've got so many good guys around me. Dan Dan Hooker coming off a massive win mm. against um James Vick. Yeah, for from what he's just overcome, um, coming off, you know, a bad fight with uh Barboza and, and to take time off and then come back like he never left, you know, and put on a statement, get a bonus. Um, having Israel, you know, fighting for the title, um, or unifying the title against Robert Whitaker, and just having the that 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 kind of caliber of fighters around you daily, um, it definitely rubs off on you and then it gives you this high expectation that you have to kind of train and live up to. So um yeah, I'm in a good place like with with my team right now of Eugene, you know, our head coach, um, taking charge and um, you know, or obviously giving it giving um spreading his time out so he's not just, you know, devoted to one fighter. He he's very well he's very good at um giving you attention when you need it and um yeah that's why I've been working working hard just with him and um yeah I'm excited to you know put on a show I've I've, I've missed that feeling of walking out to the cage hearing my walk up music and um you know see, seeing familiar faces in the crowd um not not too many familiar faces this time just cuz my family don't want to come to China <laughs> they want to save their money and wait wait for Australia or or for uh, America or hopefully New Zealand so um yeah, I, I just can't wait, and, I, and it's an exciting time for the, not just myself, but New Zealand mixed martial arts. Um, there's a there's a momentum right happening right now, and you, you're starting to see that. And um, there's going to be more of us, uh, definitely a part of the UFC. And um, yeah, just can't wait. All right, man. Well, August 31st, UFC on ESPN Plus 15, Shenzhen, China. Thanks, Kai, for the time, man, and uh, good luck on the fight and your future. I really appreciate it, bro. Thank you. And, um, yeah, I always love um, how you've always shown support, not just UFC fighters, but, you know, the local the local talent out there. You've always given them a platform to kind of pave the way. So, yeah, I appreciate your, your time as well, bro. No doubt, man.